Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? The Sony A5100 is a popular camera with content creators because of its small size and powerful video capability. But it's also notorious for overheating. Stick around and I'll show you how I fixed this. Well, kinda. My experience with the camera overheating while shooting video isn't unique, and what's more, other Sony models have the same problem, like the A6000 and 6300. In general, the camera would start warning about high temperature around 12 minutes into shooting a clip, then shut itself down at about 15 minutes. Clearly there's something wrong with how the camera handles heat building up inside it. There's a lot of workarounds people have come up with, like keeping the screen away from the body, or leaving the battery door open, or even trying different memory cards. These may help, but they never truly fix the problem. At most, you only get a couple extra minutes of footage. But then I ran across an article and video about fixing the problem on the A6000 by adding some thermal pads to the processors inside the camera. The results looked promising, and it got me wondering, would the same process work on my A5100? So I took mine apart to find out. Now fair warning, this process isn't for the faint of heart, as you'll soon see. I started by taking out the battery and removing my quick release plate. I popped up the flash and removed the three screws inside with a JIS number zero screwdriver. These are similar to Phillips, but slightly different sized. The ribbon cable is friction fit and simply pulls out, then I set the flash off to the side. There's one screw hiding on the side of the flash cavity. Then I move to the right side and remove the two screws on either side of the NFC logo. There are three screws on the left side, one next to the strap eyelet and two inside the memory card door. Once those are out, you can carefully slide off the flash release button. The three screws on the bottom need to come out next, so the rear plastic trim can be removed. I used a spudger to carefully pop it free, with a bit of tricky maneuvering around the LCD screen hinge. I removed the two screws holding the screen to the body, then made what would prove to be a critical mistake by disconnecting the ribbon cable. More about this in a little bit. Next, I freed the thumb wheel assembly and flipped it out of the way. There's no need to disconnect the cable here. I also lifted out the NFC ribbon cable, then removed the screw holding down the metal shield in the corner. There's another screw to the right of the flash that needs to be taken out, along with two over by the SD card slot. I pulled out the plastic trim from the flash cavity and removed the hidden screw from the corner. I got the spudger out again and pried free the metal shield. It fits pretty snug and I took care not to pry against anything fragile. With the shield removed, the heatsink is exposed, sitting between the SD card slot and battery compartment. I took out the single screw at the bottom and lifted the heatsink away. I was a bit surprised by what I saw, namely that the main processor already had a thermal pad on it. Granted, the Wi-Fi antenna was stuck in the middle, but it was a step in the right direction. But the other chip below it didn't have anything on it, and I suspected it might be the cause of the overheating. I had bought some 1mm thick thermal pad material, and cut a piece big enough to cover both chips, and replace the pad that was already there. I trimmed back the black plastic shield, then put the heatsink back on, and found that the thermal pad was too thin to make contact. So I cut another piece and laid it on top, but then it became too thick. Okay, so I resigned myself to the fact that I wouldn't be finishing the mod that day and needed to do some more research. I decided to put the camera back together so I could at least use it in the meantime. Now, reassembly really is just the reverse of disassembly, but remember how I said I made a critical mistake? While trying to reinstall the LCD ribbon cable, I broke the connector. It's friction fit, but apparently very fragile. 
Long story short, this basically ruined the logic board. Camera repair shops I contacted just wanted to replace the whole board at a price that made it uneconomical. I looked into doing a component level repair, but couldn't find a suitable replacement connector. I had killed my camera. A stroke of luck happened a few weeks later. I found another A5100 for sale online that had been dropped. It had a few problems, the main one being that its screen was smashed. But it was said to still power on and take pictures, so I picked it up as a parts camera. Now, I didn't shoot much video of this next part. I wanted to actually fix my camera and didn't need the added pressure. But essentially, I moved the screen and a few other pieces from my dead camera over to the new one. I took some deep breaths and managed to reinsert that ribbon cable without breaking the connector again. And when I was done, I had a working camera. While I was in there, I just couldn't leave well enough alone though. I hadn't ordered any new thermal pads since the original attempt, since breaking my camera was awfully discouraging. But I had the new camera apart already, and so I took the thermal pad from the dead camera and installed it on the second processor that was missing one. I figured it may not be ideal, but it was worth a shot. So what about the results? Well, they're a bit mixed. In general, I find that it does take longer for the camera to overheat now. Before, I was getting about 15 minutes, and now I'm getting well over 20 on average. But the time is really inconsistent. I installed the Open Memories Tweak app in order to disable the clip length limitation, then shot some test footage in the car for my podcast series, This Does Not Commute. I only got 17 minutes before the camera overheated. But another test the next day got me a whopping 48 minutes. Overall, this experience has been frustrating to say the least. Part of that is of my own doing, of course, but to go through all of that and still not have consistent results is disappointing. Consistency is really all I'm after. If I know the camera will always last for a certain amount of time, that's something I can work with. And perhaps the even bigger bummer came while putting the replacement camera back together, when I realized that to take that metal shield off, I didn't need to disconnect the screen to begin with. Knowing what I know now, I may take another shot at it again, with better thermal materials and the knowledge of what not to do. Or maybe I'll leave well enough alone and buy a camera that doesn't overheat. But in any case, I do think that with some more tweaking, this may be the solution we're looking for. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at thisdoesnotcomp, and as always, thanks for watching.